Hi, I'm Andy Monti, your guide to success in the sight lighting industry. And today we're gonna to talk about cast in place light pole bases. Every sight lighting project has light poles and each of those light poles has a foundation. Most people walking through a parking lot will see a light pole base, but they won't really pay any attention to it. However, for an electrical contractor, it's hard not to notice these things. The reason why is these are really difficult things to put into place. There's a lot of options, and some of them are more of a hassle than others. So today, I want to talk about the steps it takes to actually install a cast-in-place light pole base. Step one, you're gonna to have to order all of the materials that you're going to need to install this foundation. So you're gonna to have to go to different points of contact for rebar, for the reinforcements, conduit to put lining through the concrete so you can run your wires. You're gonna need a cardboard tube to actually house all the concrete that you're gonna have inside this foundation. And all of these different things need to be lined up and arrive on site at the same time. So it can get pretty complicated. Step two, it's time to start scheduling the lead times for your materials and your mixers so everything can show up on site at the same time. This can be a hassle in that you have to wait for good weather because if it starts to rain, it could mess with your cardboard tube. You don't want this tube to deteriorate and blow out at the bottom when you pour the concrete. So scheduling can be a bit of an issue, but given good weather, you schedule your mixer and you get your folks on site so you can start to work. Step three, you're gonna dig your hole and get all of your materials ready to put in the hole to house this foundation. So you'll start with your tube. You're gonna get it in there, get it cut to length, level it out. Then you're gonna take your rebar cage that you've already bent and tied and gotten everything together, stick it in there. From there, you're gonna to have to cut, glue, and prime your conduit. And you're gonna run it through where the rebar cage uh, isn't in the way cut holes in your cardboard tube and run all the piping through that so that you can actually get your wires running from the trench up to where the top of the unit is going to be where it will connect to the pole. At this point you can actually pour the concrete. So you'll pour the concrete, make sure it's all leveled off, screed it at the top, you're going to actually use a separate tool to put your chamfer in there. And at this point it's ready to put your bolts into place to mount the pole but it's gonna take a while to actually cure before you can put anything on there. Step four, you're actually gonna to have to return to site about two to three days later to remove that cardboard too. Otherwise, that cardboard is gonna to adhere to the concrete. It's gonna have a lot of cardboard sticking to the unit. And aesthetically, it's gonna look really bad. So you wanna avoid that. But even two to three days later, it's not gonna be cured enough to mount the pole. So you have to actually come back a third time to your site, step five, to mount your pole. So three trips to site are required in order to actually complete the installation of a cast in place light pole base, which can be a very long and arduous process and unnecessary if you were to go for say a precast concrete installation. In conclusion, it can be really functional to cast one of these light pole bases on site, but it can run into a lot of snags in the process. You may not vibrate it properly, so you're gonna have a lot of air pockets at the surface of the concrete. We call them bug holes. You don't want that. Aesthetically, it's not pleasing. Uh, you might run into a situation where you're running into high water levels on site and it's hard to stick a cardboard tube into open water. You want to avoid rain so weather can be a scheduling issue. Uh, human error can be a factor when you're putting something into these units like a bolt configuration that needs to line up to this pole. If you're even an inch off at times with that bolt circle, it may not line up with your pole, which means all that work you just did is lost. You're probably gonna have to either tear it out or cut the bolts off, drill into the concrete, and now epoxy in bolts. It can be a huge issue. So, the big thing is, while it may be functional, it's very long in the process, and it's very difficult and prone to human error. And there are better methods. So, next time, 
I'd like to talk with you a little bit about how precast concrete foundations can be installed and how this will speed up contractors on site so everyone can finish on time and on budget. So while you're here, why not subscribe to the channel so that you can see all the new videos that are coming out and just stick around, check out some of the videos that are already here and see if this product is a good fit for your team and your project. And with that, thanks for stopping by.